In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Google Maps on iPhone and Google Maps on Android. Okay, as soon as I open up both apps, I notice that the iOS version of Maps is zoomed in more than the Android version of Maps. Okay, as we scroll up on the app, we'll see that there's a foodie list on iOS and I don't see no foodie list on Android. If you scroll down more, you see lists on iOS and on Android. You got events also if you scroll all the way down. But I do notice on the Android side, there's event buttons that are not available on iOS, nowhere to be found. So I'm gonna tap on the Today Events button and it shows you all the events going on in Miami or your area where you are. So I'm gonna go back and see all list on the Android version, which is missing on the iOS version. So it's, give me a, it's gonna give me a list of all the trending uh, weekly places in Miami. Now we're gonna go back to the main page. As we go back up, um, I could tell that the foodie list appears on the Android side, which it didn't earlier. Okay, let's click inside, see how the foodie list looks. As you can see, this, the share buttons and the follow buttons are available on both platforms. Let's scroll down, see how it looks. So far, everything looks good. Let's scroll back to the top where it says more, where it show you more categories. Let's see how that looks. So far, both look the same. Let's scroll down and let's tap on movies, see how it's, it looks when you search for it. So far it looks good. Both are showing movie theaters nearby. Let's check out the filters. And I noticed that the filters on iOS has less options versus Android. On Android side on the top you got more uh, preset buttons or filters that is missing on iOS. Let's go back out to the main map. Let's tap on the layer button to see how it looks. And so far they both have the same options. Okay, now let's tap on the driving button tab on the bottom. Let's go to the driving section. Android side, they got these two buttons missing on the iOS side. And the go buttons are placed differently on both platforms. All right, let's tap on the home button on iOS, see how it looks. So far, so good. You got the big bubbles, which I like, the start and steps. Let's tap on the Android version. You got the same stuff also, uh, but the bubbles are, the start, it's uh, square. If we tap on the step-by-step -step navigation on both, uh, Android does have to provide more information, but if you scroll down on the Android version, you're gonna find your address, the destination with Street View Maps, which the iOS version is missing. Like I said earlier, on the Android side, you do get more information, like uh, get a ride from Uber, traffic uh, in data, and on iOS and Android, you got a uh, find parking option. On the top screen where you pick the bus, uh, ride by car, etc., there is a option for weather on Android, which is missing on the iOS side. And if you click on option on both, you go into the option screen, but Android has wheelchair ac accessible that is not available on the iOS version. Now let's say we don't want to navigate by car, but we want to call an Uber ride. And let's just pick an Uber ride to see how how it looks on iOS and Android. And I do like the way our uh, Android version looks. It looks more detailed. You get more info by the icons on Uber and Lyft versus uh, iOS version. Now I'm gonna go to the transit tab if you wanna take a bus. And right now off the bat, I do like the way the Android version looks with the little chat bubbles. I don't know why, it just looks more uh, modern versus the iOS version. If you scroll down on both, you get a lot of info and basically the same info. Let's go to more stations. Now, one thing I'm getting an error on the Android version. I'm not getting any information. It's like a dead link on iOS. I do get bus info. This fourth tab is not available on, on iOS. It basically suggests all the areas you've been to. And when you tap on it, it gives you a listing of new restaurants opening up, restaurants that are trending, that are very popular. And I like it a lot because sometimes I want to just go to a new restaurant and this gives you a lot of info. 
both maps perform really well but i think ios performed better but it might be due to the lower resolution screen but it is a lot smoother when i zoom in and out versus android they're both 60 frames though now if you want if i want to search on the microphone on both i tap on the microphone food in the area and when you're done i do like the way um android still shows up the the category uh, buttons on the top where iOS is missing. Now let's tap the little ribbon on the sides to save your, your list and see how they both look. So far they both look the same. Now let's tap on the Salsa Fiesta restaurant to see how the detail looks on both. And you can see the iOS version has the big buttons I like. Although I like the Android version also. Now let's make a call on both to see how they both look. So there you go on the Android version and there you go on the iOS version. Now if we tap on that section where it says last visit 10 months ago. Um, it'll give you a timeline of where you've been in that place a year ago or so. Now this section here called plus code, I never used it or I haven't even noticed it. I don't know how you would use it on your phone, but I really don't care about this option that is not available on iOS. Now let's tap on the open and close hours on both platforms to see uh, how they look. And they both give you the open and close hours, but um, I, the Android version gives you happy hours and you could just suggest an edit in case there's an error on the hours on uh, location or the, yeah, the location and you don't get that on iOS. Now on iOS, it gives you a time where it's busy or, the, or it's not, which you don't get on Android. They both also provide a link to the website if you want to order straight to their website or you want to check out their website. Both platforms also provide suggest and edit in case the place is permanently closed or maybe um, change address, etc. One thing I noticed on the Android side, it says questions and answers as the community. I don't see that on iOS at all. Now I'm going to scroll down a little more to see what the difference on both platforms. They both have the same information. You got your maps down there on Android, on iOS also. You got your ratings. They both look similar, very similar. Scroll down a little more. You got your ratings. Also on Android, if you look there, you got some tabs. Overview, review, photos is missing on iOS. It's more like organized on Android. On iOS, it could be there, but it could be scattered while you scroll down. And let me scroll down a little more to see how they both look similar in information. View all. I like the uh, Android version better, a, li a little bit better. It shows more uh, information. Scroll around, view all, let's see, 15 more. And then on iOS, it's just view all. So in all, Android does provide more information when you're scrolling around um, looking for something to eat. Now let's tap on um, options. And let's see what kind of options you get on both platforms. On Android, the ones with the arrows are available, which is not available on iOS. But on iOS, set as parking location is not available on Android. And on Android where it says share plays, it's up there on iOS. And on personal reviews, if you look up the option, it says report review. Uh, they both have it. Okay, now let's get out of uh, business information and go back to the main map. When you see the side uh, menu right there on Google Maps, it says your place. It gives you information on your place. Although you get more um, information on Android, more tabs. The save tab gives you all the information you have saved in your Google Maps. On Android, you got upcoming tab and visited tabs, the places you visit before. It's missing on iOS. Then if you go back to the sidebar or menu, you got your timeline, which is available on both. And it gives you um, information on where you've been, etc. And then add visit on Android, which is missing on the iOS side. And then you got uh, that little pencil on the Android side, which is missing on iOS. Let's go back to the main menu and there's some options missing on iOS, which is available on Android, which is start driving, Wi-Fi only toggle. You got Google Earth link to the app, main app, and then you got satellite and traffic layer. Now, some of those missing features might be available on iOS in the settings mode of the app. So my favorite mode on, on Android uh, maps is um, start driving which basically what it does is it puts you the, the the map in 3d 
almost like going somewhere but you're not going anywhere it's basically just putting the the, the map in 3d and showing you around and actually helping you uh, know where you are if you try that on iOS it's not gonna work all it does is gonna put you in uh, 3d mode but it's gonna give you that search result that I was using a while back food in the area and I wish this mode would work as soon as you open maps on Android you know what I mean I love this mode it's, it's like using one of those uh, car navigation apps that you have on your BMW that goes straight to 3d mode and it's so cool because as soon as you start driving the, the cursor moves and it, and it shows you where you are I like that and you could tell it hey Google search for some food and we'll do that on Android and it will give you the result on the map which is nice and once you search for your place you could just navigate to it and this mode is not available on, uh, on the iOS version unless you're navigating already somewhere and the last thing I want to show you on both uh, maps is Street View you put your drop your pin on the map slide up and on the iOS version and or you tap on the Android version and you get your uh, Street View uh, options and it's on the iOS it's start directions on Android also and then when you hit directions on both it gives you uh, you know the, the location you want to navigate to you can share that location where you drop the pin on both platforms let's tap on the label icon see how they both look they both look identical as I scroll up they both have the same information now let's look up the options on both you got download offline maps set up parking and I end your site is different add to contact download off my offline maps there's no set as parking location on the uh, Android version but the Android version does have an option it says add to visit places which is not available on iOS now if we tap on the report icon on both on the top right it does take you to a website and you can report errors on Google uh, Maps to Google now if you tap on the compass icon on the top right by the share button you get into a mode where you can use a gyroscope on the phone and they both work pretty well you can see iOS and Android working almost flawless together but side by side and it's a cool little gimmicky feature in my opinion I don't use it that much so there it is guys I hope you enjoyed this video um, I uh, hit the like button comment on it what do you think about this video this is my first video on you doing app versus app um, if you want to request uh, an app to do on iOS versus Android let me know on the comment section and subscribe guys because I got more apps coming thanks for watching this video and you guys have a nice day bye bye